So I'm very excited about this, you guys. I've been working on this thing for a long time. It's part of the history, the legacy of my parents. It's part of the remarkable opportunities I've gotten by being an engineer here at Cornell and uh, the really wonderful education, the terrific instructors I had while I was here. Inertia is a property of matter. look up at that building and go, man, it would sure be cool to have a clock right there, right? And I, you know, I said to myself roughly, a clock! Wouldn't that be cool? This clock has a solar positioning antenna for the main clock mechanism and a separate one for solar noon. They receive their time signals from outer space. Quite remarkable. I got you all watching the clock. This is good. We all rush around texting, sending emails, jumping around, but now we're all taking a moment watching the clock. And this will be my first solar noon here. So I'm very excited. Very excited. The sky conditions are ideal as the Cornell students stare at a building. We'll light it up once a day at solar noon. Now, solar noon is this time that's not clock noon. It's when the sun is highest in the sky. And the astronomers will say, when, or navigators will say, when the sun culminates, the culmination of the sun. There it goes. Look at that, my friends. Look at that. Do you see the brightening in the sun symbol? So your colleagues, your fellow students at Cornell designed the controller. A very well-known outdoor clock company said they could not do it. It was beyond their expertise. But the Cornell students made this controller. Look at that, a hand for them, everybody. Those of you who are astronomically savvy and those of you who soon will be, solar noon today is at 7, 13.07. 107 daylight time and I think 40 seconds. So let us all mosey out to Hoy Field and watch solar noon come through the clock. So now at this moment, the sun is culminating. Uh, I, I show 1306, we got another few seconds. It, uh, today it's just about dead on 13, uh, 107 and 40 seconds. This will be the moment the sun here at this longitude is highest in the sky. This shows you that the earth is turning. As flat as it might look when you're standing in the outfield, the earth is a big ball. So according to my instrument, we can have a countdown. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Solar noon, everybody. So now the doors will close over the next uh, two, almost three minutes. And this would be the same effect if the disk of the sun we're passing over a slip. And the clock has been programmed, my understanding is, uh, for the next 150 years. So you can come out here for quite some time to come. So we got, what's 108? Look how bright it is, people. They laughed at me. <laughs> people who couldn't begin to understand my theories. That's pretty good, pretty good. The earth is turning, we're going around the sun, the whole thing is wobbling all kinds of different ways, but we can come to understand it, and that is worthy, my friends. That, is, that reflects very well on the human species. And I remind you that since we're using space exploration satellites to time this clock, it uh, reminds us all 
that space exploration really brings out the best in us. And this is a wonderful thing about humans. Humans do all kinds of bad stuff. They kill each other. They uh, destroy or ruin the environment on which we all depend. But once in a while, humans do some wonderful things. And this ability to understand how this would work in our place in space is really a, a great thing uh, that I hope you all will think about it your year, during your years at Cornell. Uh, thank you all very much for being here. We're going to walk the door closed all the way. There it goes. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah.